today I wanted to talk a little bit about how I've been keeping busy during this crazy time, uh, especially as a no pair in France. So for those who don't know, I moved to France three and a half weeks ago. Today is April 1st, 2020. And so it has been a crazy time to have moved to a foreign country, especially a European country like France. For those who don't know what an au pair is, it's basically like a cross between a foreign exchange student and a nanny. It's single young people, usually women, who uh, don't have kids, who go to another foreign country, usually for the purpose of teaching their host families, kids, their native language. So in my case, I came to live with a host family in France and there were three primary responsibilities that I had agreed to coming here and that my host family was looking for. Number one is picking the kids up from school and dropping them off at school. Number two was helping when my host dad had to travel. My host dad has to travel to America a lot for work um, and he'll be gone for like a week out of every month. So I was going to be around to really help out during those times and, you know, give my host mom an extra hand. And number three, of course, was to help teach the kids English and help them with their English proficiency. So after a long process of getting a visa, getting a passport, leasing my apartment in DC, packing everything I owned in DC into a storage unit, um, waiting on the visa for a month back in Austin, doing all of this stuff to get here. I finally booked my flight and I arrived. And one week later, the French president announced that school was canceled. We were going to have to stay in our homes for basically an indefinite period of time. We're still not sure how long it's gonna last. And everything that I expected to do during my time changed. Also during this time, the US government announced that Europeans would no longer be able to come to America for any reason. So that also meant that all of my host dad's business trips were effectively canceled for, I mean, they said 30 days to start, but we really don't know how long all of this is going to last. So basically, like pretty much everyone else during this time, my expectations for the future and my job were totally turned on its head. Everything was turned upside down and we basically had to figure out how we were gonna adjust to this new life because no longer was I going to be picking up the kids from school and dropping them off because there was no school. No longer was my host dad going to be going on his business trips. And now we were all going to be in the house together 24 seven for an unknown amount of time. And so I just wanted to talk about kind of what we've done to manage this situation, how we've approached it like as a family unit, what I as no pair have individually done to kind of stay healthy and stay sane and be use this time as positively as possible. Um, I think that overall we have done a really amazing job of staying busy during this time and being productive and staying happy. We are in our third week of quarantine now and it's honestly been, it's been a really interesting experience but it's been a really rejuvenating experience for me. And I think a lot of that has to do with the attitude that I've taken in approaching this and also the quality of my host family and how strategic they were and the plan that we put into place and just the things we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So the first thing we did was we established a routine, a schedule that we were gonna go by during weekdays every day and my host parents really sat down and thought about this. They talked about it with me. They, you know, presented it to the kids. Um, again, I'm really lucky to have a host family that has approached things in the way that they have because not every host family has been as organized or as rational in approaching things. But basically what my host parents did was they made a schedule where I would be spending an hour to an hour and a half with the kids 
at a time um, and it would be broken up throughout the day, they would be spending an hour to an hour and a half with the kids every day and it would be broken up. The kids basically start every day with a, well, we all wake up and are eating breakfast. Everyone wakes up at like 8 a.m. except for me. I wake up at 8 30 um because I don't like eat breakfast and I don't need I don't know I don't I don't need time to get ready but um and then by nine academics are starting with dad usually and so they'll be with their dad for an hour of academics then they'll have 30 minutes of exercise we have had a lot of different kind of exercise approaches during this quarantine which has been really fun there have been zumba classes or like pilates classes maybe it is from my host dad's cousin who does them like on zoom um there have been lots of like yoga videos and just exercise videos for kids that um they've done there have been um there was parkour which is like really fun and not exactly what you'd think it is um i'll see if i can include a clip uh, and like an explanation of what parkour is in our household that's a really fun type of exercise there's like playing soccer in the backyard we can go on walks we can like go outside and go on walks for up to a thousand meters away i think like one kilometer away for an hour every day so we've really the parents really were intentional from the beginning about making sure that the kids were getting at least an hour of exercise every day and you know as much physical activity as possible which has helped so much and you know keeping everyone sane and healthy and i also really prioritized exercise because i just know for myself it helps a lot i don't do a lot of parkour i don't do a lot of like videos and stuff like that like they do what i mostly do is i walk up and down this driveway that i'm sitting in front of and i used to run up and down it but i hate running and i was like i'd rather just walk and i'll walk you know for you know four miles in a day i'll walk for an hour and a half and i just listen to my podcast and i get so much joy it is not the prettiest path to be walking it's the same thing every day but I get so much joy just from moving and listening to my favorite podcasts. And the podcast that I've been listening to, really the podcast I've been listening to the most is Dear Hank and John. It is something that never fails to bring me joy. It got me through my first year of teaching. Um, It really has brought joy to me in so many difficult moments. And so I just love that I'll have so many memories of walking up and down this driveway, listening to it, it makes me laugh out loud. And I've been a nerd fighter since like 2007. So big fan of them. And I'm so glad that they're still making content. The other podcast that I've listened to for a long time since I was in high school and that I've picked back up on is Freakonomics. And I also have lots of audiobooks. I've always had audiobooks. I own like 160 audiobooks I started listening when I was in high school, when I first got my first job. It's like the first thing I invested in. So I love listening to that. I am on my third book. The two books that I read, I read in like 48 hours, like started and finished. They were super good and really sucked me into it. I'm looking for some more books. I've started on a third one that's good. Um, But yeah, I've been reading a lot because I'm trying to use this as an opportunity to do the things that bring me joy and also expand my mind and be productive so I don't feel like this was just wasted time. I've also been making videos, which has been super fun for me. I don't know. It's just one of those things where even if no one watches it, I have all of these ways to remember this time in my life and I get so much joy out of filming them and editing them. And another thing that I've been doing is writing. I've been journaling and just self-reflecting and growing from a lot of events that happened in my life right before coming to France. And I have also been writing just about my life like i started kind of a little bit of a book we'll see what comes of it but i've been getting to do a lot of writing which again is something that brings me joy and just i feel like helps with my growth and development as 
a person. And the other thing that I've been doing is watching videos, of course, like watching YouTube, watching Netflix. I haven't done so much of that just because, well, okay, I've watched a lot of YouTube, but I haven't watched a lot of TV shows because it doesn't bring me like a huge amount of joy and it kind of does make me feel like I've wasted time at the end of the day. But so far, I really haven't had a problem keeping myself busy. Oh, and the other thing we've been doing is we have played so many board games. Like y'all, we, the first day of quarantine, we had Clue like as a brand new game. The kids had never played Clue before. It was in its plastic. Within, like by the end of the second week of quarantine, I would say conservatively, I would estimate like very conservatively that we had played Clue 30 times. You know the little packets where you keep track of like who has what and they're two-sided sheets? We have only four of those sheets left. Um, so yeah, we played a ton of Clue. We've played Monopoly. We've played Dixit. I was so happy they had Dixit because it's like one of my favorite board games. We played Ticket to Ride, which again is a board game that I discovered right before coming to France playing with uh, my friends Veronique and Jonas and Brenna. And so I had a lot of fun um playing that again we've played did i say monopoly we've played monopoly just so many different games this ghost game that's like specifically a french game i don't know how to explain it there's like it has an artificial intelligence or not like artificial intelligence it's like uh a game that knows where you're moving and it tells you different things and there's a ghost and you're trying to find him and then also like a racing car game which um was fun but it's just kind of like one of those games that's really random and so there's not a lot of strategy to it but yeah I've been introduced to new board games and we've played so many board games and we started playing um super smash no not super smash bros super mario party is that what it's called you know what I mean the mario party game with where you're trying to get the stars so we've been playing that this week too. Um, luckily, the kids have like so much fun stuff to keep them busy and even to keep me busy. Like at my oldest host kid has a Switch, so um, I can play Fortnite while he plays Fortnite on the PS4 or maybe X PS4, I think. And um, they have hoverboards. They're like a little thing that they can sit on with their hoverboards. And I don't even know how to describe it but um, tons of toys, tons of fun things. And so I'm really blessed to be in a family where we don't really want for anything. Um, we have tons of things to do and it's honestly a lot more enjoyable probably than, I mean, certainly than if I was stuck in DC or even back home in Austin because I'm still, you know, with new people getting to kind of discover them every day. I'm getting to play with three really great kids every single day. Um, and it's just really a high quality experience compared to what I would be experiencing in any other situation that I would be in during this time. So I've been trying to focus on that a lot. I've also been trying to focus, practice gratitude and um, positivity because really me, whether I feel, whether I approach the situation in a really negative way or a really positive way isn't actually going to change the presence of COVID-19 or how it's going to affect my future. Like, if I am negative about things, that does not mean that borders are going to open up sooner. That does not mean I'll get to kind of like travel sooner. It doesn't mean the kids are going to go back to school sooner. It doesn't mean that like, I don't know, like it's it's not going to change anything if I'm negative besides maybe like increasing my negative output to the world, maybe it would increase tensions like in the household. But that's really the perspective I take um, on this. I've been trying to find a silver lining and just, I don't know, exercise and have fun and read and write and make videos and enjoy the things that I enjoy and call my friends a lot and listen to podcasts and to me that's been really fulfilling and so I would say that if 
you're stuck in this situation and you're having a hard time with it, um, first of all, don't like consume the news all day, every day. Maybe not even every day. Like I check up on the virus, especially like back home every, maybe every couple of days, but I don't really do an everyday thing. And I mostly for like knowing what's going on at home, I just talk to my family. I don't watch the news because it's just going to be stressful and it's just going to stress me out. And that's not actually, and it's not actually going to change anything about the situation. Um, and then the other thing I would say is like practice gratitude and try to find the good aspects of, of the situation. I know that's hard and it's not a good situation, but if you try to approach it with a positive mindset, I think that everyone will be a lot better off. So that's my quarantine update. Week three is going pretty well. Let's hope for a great rest of the week. And if we go into week four, which I'm thinking we will, let's hope for a good week four as well.